I didn't really know kind of what to expect. I, you know, really believed in myself that I, you know, could make it to the NHL. Um, you know, I was taken 23rd overall, and I think when you look at that, you usually don't expect um, guys taken in that range to, I guess, make the NHL after just kind of another year. So I was working out all alone in my in my garage, um, in the cold, um, and just skating at any ice rink I could find outdoor. So all the rinks were closed, and I think just putting the work in, I think if you want to succeed and you put the work in, I think, you know, chances are that you're going to be successful. Pass the torch, man. Keeps getting better. Well, Wyatt Johnson, thank you for joining the podcast. We're down in your new hometown of Dallas. We'll get into your your actual home with Joe Pavelski later, which I'm excited to talk about. But how are you doing? Thanks for joining the pod. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Of course. So we're going to talk about your whole journey in hockey. I want to throw it back to the very beginning. So you grew up in Toronto, right? And was it basically yeah. like you can skate before you walk up there? Yeah, pretty much. Um, man, I was just kind of hearing stories from my parents. Um I think I started skating around maybe two years old, maybe wow. three. Yeah. Um, so yeah, pretty much, pretty much when I started walking, I started skating. Um, and then obviously hockey in, in Toronto is probably one of the biggest, one of the biggest yeah. things. So um, just surrounded by hockey for for my whole childhood. Was did you play any other sports? Or was it just hockey? I played uh, soccer growing up until I played rep until I was fourteen, I believe. Um, and then I played a lot of other sports, like in school. Like I played pretty much every sport I could in in school and nice. stuff like that. But um, yeah, I played soccer growing up, which I think helps yeah, helps a lot. Totally. And so, was it always your goal and dream to kind of make it to the NHL? Yeah, yeah, that was um, pretty much the sole focus for me ever since I could start walking, start skating. It was hockey, hockey, hockey. Um, just wanted to grow up in the NHL. I know watching. Um, just kind of videos from when I was a kid that my mom would take and yep. uh, always had a hockey stick in my hand. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been my life so far. Absolutely. Who were some of your kind of role models growing up as a kid of players you looked up to in the NHL? My biggest, um, my favorite player growing up was Pavel Datsuk. Um, I loved watching him play. Just, I think you kind of see the, some of his highlights, It pretty self-explanatory. And then more recent years, I really liked watching Mitch Marner on the Leafs. Um, I think I you know, play a little, kind of a similar game to him um, and try to model my game a bit after him and just kind of take things from him. Um, so he's been you know, a lot of fun to watch still and, and just kind of the later years as I was growing up in, you know, minor hockey. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, Mitch being one of the, the best players in the NHL today. And so you're only 19 years old. So you grew up watching Mitch and we were recording this in December, but I think you play him tomorrow night. So like, what's yeah. that feeling like? Do you have any times where you kind of have to pinch yourself and be like, Oh wow! Like I'm really playing against the guy that was on my wall in my bedroom growing up. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's really it's really special. I think my fourth NHL game was in Toronto, um, so it was pretty awesome the way that worked out. Playing in front of you know a ton of my family friends, um, and yeah, I don't know if it'll really ever get old. Just kind of looking across the ice and seeing you know one of the superstars on the other team and just kind of just admiring the moment. Um, it's yeah, I still kind of have to pinch myself. It still doesn't really seem true. Yeah, I, I can't imagine that feeling as a teenager. And so as a teenager, I think the stat is like you're the first North American teenager to, to play for the Stars since like 1994, right? I know um, one of your teammates, Miro, he did it, um, but the first North American. So when you kind of got to the NHL, you played in your first game, do you think the process like happened really fast and you got there quicker than you imagined or did it kind of work out the way you thought? Um, yeah, I mean, it was... I didn't really know kind of what to expect. I, you know, really believed in myself that I, you know, could make it to the NHL. But I think going back to my NHL draft year and, and once I got drafted, um, you know, I was taken 23rd overall. And I think when you look at that, you usually don't expect um, guys taken in that range to, I guess, make the NHL after just kind of another year. So, um, yeah, I really didn't know what to expect. It was also um, leading up to the NHL draft, it was crazy with COVID and right. missed a full year of hockey pretty much. So it was kind of like, I, it was tough to kind of gauge where I, where I was at. I knew personally just kind of through all the training I had that I was, you know, really confident that I was going to have a really good year in the OHL. But um, yeah, I didn't really have any clue what to expect. But right. 
probably most likely wasn't expecting to be in this situation. Yeah, so you make your debut the first game of the season in 2022, um, but you mentioned you were drafted in the first round. And so did you feel like coming in and when you had your first few weeks of the season, there was a lot of pressure on you to perform at such a high level because you were so highly recruited coming out? Um, yeah, there's like definitely a little bit of pressure I found. Um, I think the biggest just kind of the pressure I put on myself and just wanting to succeed, obviously. Um, for me, the the nine game mark it was a, a big marker, and you know, getting sent back to junior. So I think I put a little bit of pressure on myself to to perform throughout the first nine games, and and just kind of make sure that you know I was able to stay here for the year and, and kind of prove to you know the coaching staff, the general manager, kind of everyone in the organization that I'm a player that'll you know help the team win. And um, so yeah, I think I didn't really take too much any of the outside pressure more just kind of internally just kind of wanting to succeed yeah and you mentioned kind of that nine game it's almost like a tryout right where you're trying yeah. to prove to the staff that that you're ready and able to play in the nhl versus going back to one of the to the ahl or anything like that yeah yeah well especially for me I, i'm not eligible to go back to the hl right. this year so it was either nhl or, or, or go back to junior in the ohl so yep um yeah it was just i just wanted to, i wanted to be here uh that was that was my motivation and um yeah I guess that was kind of what I put the pressure in there's there's got to be some pressure off your back when you score in your NHL debut right what, what was that moment like for you yeah that was um very special moment for me um luckily enough my parents were were there to be able to watch the game and, and see the first goal but yeah that's definitely um takes a lot of pressure off just not having to think about your first goal and um I know I would have been stressing a bit if it went a couple games or I hadn't gotten a goal yet, so um, definitely good to get the first one out of the way and not have to think about it. Was that was that down here in Dallas? That was in Nashville. Nashville. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. You had the whole family there. Any friends? Uh, yeah, well, I had my, my parents, um, mom and dad, and then my girlfriend was there, and then my billet mom from uh, Windsor, she was able to come, come down awesome. with one of her friends, so I guess there was five people there who was able to watch me, and then a lot of my other family and friends were able to see me in Toronto a few games later, so worked out uh pretty amazing yeah that's awesome and so we're past that kind of nine game tryout phase right and you're you're on the stars and you're a mainstay and it's kind of crazy because we're almost coming up on halfway through the nhl season not yet but we're close i guess what is one of the biggest things that you've learned or maybe you didn't expect um getting to the nhl obviously you know like the town is gonna be so much better than anything you've ever played against um maybe it was even better than you thought it would be but what's mm -hmm. that one biggest thing that you really didn't expect coming to the nhl that you've learned there's a lot. Um, obviously, there's just the talent level and how competitive it is. It's like you think you know how how good the level of hockey is, but you you really don't know until you just get get into a game. It's like I think the first few games was like it's pretty eye opening, just seeing just how good the the NHL is and and how good all the players are. Um, yeah, it's obviously just the best of the best throughout the whole world i mean you you go to junior and, and they're the best of the best and you think that's really good and then you you get to the nhl and just a another few steps above um and then i think i think with that also just kind of how long this season is. i mean it's only been 20 25 games or so but um you know we've been playing every other day for a while and it just kind of adds up and i think that kind of goes into just how you have to treat your body and and, and prepare i mean it's only been 25 games but definitely feels like a little bit more right now yeah and I feel like as no matter how many times you run through the scenario of how good everyone's going to be on the ice when you get to that level they're always going to be better and so you yeah. can't really picture that until you're on the ice playing yeah yeah you can there's only so much preparation you can do um it just yeah once you get into a into a game it's it's pretty amazing just kind of how good the hockey is it's um it's been so much fun I mean just kind of growing up wanting to play in the NHL and um, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty special. Yeah. And we're 25 games in the season. Like you mentioned, I think the stars are sitting in first place of your division. And so it's got to feel good to be part of such a great group. And that group is really led by Jamie Ben, Joe Pavelski, Tyler Sagan, to name a few, but I guess, do you feel lucky to have been a part of that kind of leadership group so early on in your career? We'll get into Joe and your relationship mm -hmm. in a minute, but, uh, I guess like as a whole with that whole stars kind of veteran centerpiece, how, how lucky do you feel to be a part of that group? Yeah, it's been it's been awesome like all the all the older veteran guys they've been so good to me and they've helped me a ton they've been talking to me just kind of helped me adjust and, and just kind of get comfortable with the team and then also with that just being able to play on a 
team with a lot of really really good players I think that's um you know helps a lot it's been it's been amazing so far and obviously it's a lot of fun winning games and, and doing well so I think obviously as a team we want to continue to do that um yeah overall the veterans have been amazing and they've they've helped me so much and I think really helped me just kind of get get used to the league and get comfortable yeah and there's even not like the young guys too like they're incredible like you said like Jason Robinson's having an unbelievable year Rupe Hintz as well um, but the whole team's playing well. And so I mentioned your situation with Joe Pavelski. It's super unique. I haven't heard about this in pro sports really before, but you're living at his house, right? To start your yeah. NHL career. So he's kind of like a mentor figure for you. Um, but what has that been like? What, what is Joe like around the house? Joe has been awesome. Um, well, Joe, Sarah and, and Nate, just the whole family, they've been amazing. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a really cool cool um experience for me i think coming into the league it, i think it's helped me a ton so far just having a chance to live with a family and then also um just living with joe he's obviously his kind of pedigree speaks for himself and then just kind of what kind of a person he is off the ice um he's he's been amazing i've tried to just kind of pick his brain ask him a million questions and um just try to learn from him um you know he's a true professional and um, just kind of the way he goes about every day and I don't know it's been awesome living yeah. with him and I think it's helped so much especially just having a chance to live with him and his family rather than just living alone in an apartment and just kind of being all by myself yeah that's a really cool start to your professional career and yeah you mentioned it right Joe's had an incredible career it's his 17th year he's a four-time all-star so you really get like a really good inside look on on what it takes to be great as a pro hockey player yeah yeah he's um I don't think they're would be really many or any guys better to live with in in your first year. I think he's been he's obviously an unbelievable hockey player and what he's doing at at his age right now is is pretty unbelievable and um yeah, it's just kind of he he's just kind of living with him. He kind of brings a mix of everything. He can talk to me about the game, talk to me about whatever. I think it's it's been awesome. Does he make you do any uh, chores around the house? Um yeah, a little bit. I try to help out as much as I can. Um yeah, just try to help out i mean they're they're letting me live with them and, and yeah. they're, they're do doing so much for me so yeah i'm just trying to do my part whenever i can and then he, he probably makes you caddy for him on the course when he goes out and golfs <laughs> no not yet but i've heard <laughs> i don't know if he'd need me as a caddy i've heard he's uh he's a stick. very good golfer he's so a stick i'm sure i don't think i'd help his game much yeah no that's awesome and joe's been special to work with at torch pro as a co-founder of our business and yeah it's incredible to see what he's doing on the ice and so you mentioned kind of wanting to almost, you'd love to emulate his career. Like, so when people say Wyatt Johnson in 10 years, like what do you want people to think about it, view as a hockey player? I think um, just a player who's been able to be a large, large contributor and, you know, help the Dallas Stars win a lot of hockey games, hopefully help them win a Stanley Cup. Um, yeah, I think 10 years from now, if I can just kind of be seen as someone who's been first of all, consistent, um, just kind of year in, year out, um, been a producer and also just kind of a, a key player. Um, and then I think also with that, just kind of someone who helps around and uh, just kind of a, a great person, just kind of similar to, to Joe. Yeah. I mean, being a, a good person beyond the ice is almost more important. Right. And so I guess who, who are you beyond that? Like, what are some of your hobbies? Like, obviously Joe has his his golf and his hunting maybe you've dabbled in that world with him a little bit but like what's your favorite thing to do when it's not hockey time I mean I'm a little bit of a hockey nut I love I love hockey and a lot of my time spent outside the rink is it's getting better surrounds hockey yeah just kind of watching either my games watching other games doing other stuff um some things I like to do for fun I like just kind of watching movies just relaxing um you spend so much time just kind of putting strain on your body while you're playing practicing working out um so i like just kind of relaxing and then obviously the biggest thing being away from all my family and friends is just like talking to family yeah. friends um you know all the people that are back home in toronto or anywhere else that you know i don't get to see as much um so yeah i think a lot of my time spent that i'm not playing hockey or doing stuff related to hockey just kind of talking to friends and family and I also like to golf, not yep. quite to the level of Joe, but um, you'll get there. Yeah, hopefully one day. Yeah. And so obviously with so much focus on hockey, there's probably a reason why you're 19 years old and playing in the NHL. And so 
I guess, what is like some of the things like you do beyond the ice that you focus on um, to really be the best player on the ice that you can be? Um, I think one thing is um, just like thinking the game. Um, obviously, the at the NHL level, the level of play is so high and um, the level of hockey is so high, I think. So I think, think being able to think the game is probably i think i think in my opinion one of the most important yeah. attributes in the in the game and to be successful so i think i think that's the biggest thing for me um just thinking the game at a high level and i think that just helps you in in every aspect of the game defensively offensively um just every aspect of the game just being able to think the game and just kind of see the plays and um yeah yeah and i think like obviously weight when training is important stick drills all that stuff but like you really got to be a student of the game um, yeah. and learn. And I think you're in a cool spot with this veteran group to be able to do that and then implement that to your, to your own game. Yeah. Yep. hundred percent. I think with being, um, you know, using your brain and being a, a good thinker on the ice and just kind of using your hockey IQ and vision. I think a lot of it is you have to learn and be a good learner. So I think the kind of the situation I'm in right now, I've just tried to um, be a really good listener, just learn and, and try my best to kind of take what I learned and bring it to the ice. Um, obviously there's a lot of pretty great people, you know, in the organization and players that, you know, are able to help me and, and help me improve and help me learn. Um, so I think just being a good learner is so important and, um, yeah, there's so many different ways you can, you know, help learn. Yeah. hundred percent. I think keep with the formula of that. And I think the future is very, very bright. And so I want to dive into some rapid fire questions. You can go one phrase, one word, take as long as you want. Um, but we'll jump right in. I think I know the answer to the first question because we talked about it earlier, but who was your favorite athlete growing up as a kid? Probably Paolo Datsuk slash Mitch Marner mm-hmm. kind of transitioned. Who's your favorite athlete to watch in current day sports? Maybe maybe not a hockey player. Um, I think in the golf world, I like Bryson DeChambeau. Mm. Just like the way he hits the ball and just bombs, just, just bombs it. Like it's, it's a lot of fun to watch. I can't say you should study his swing. Um, if you're going to become a golfer, um, there's probably better guys to yeah, watch, Probably, but, but he is exciting. It's, it's a fun way to play the game. It is. It is. It's a fun way. Um, so what's your pregame meal? What, I guess what are the, what's the Pavelski household serving on the night before game? Um, night before the game. Yeah. Kind of just depends the situation. Usually it'll, usually I end up eating steak and, maybe potatoes and a salad before night before a game. Um, kind of depends with being on the road a lot, but I feel like for the most part, it's usually just steak, but I'm not too too picky with that. And then day of, keep it light. Chicken and pasta, mm. always. Always. Favorite music artist right now? Probably Drake. Um, listen to him a ton. Were you a fan of the new uh, Drake 21 Savage um, collab album? Um, it was all right. I like yeah, the old was- Drake. Yeah, I like Drake. I mean, he's had a, a ton of songs, so yeah, um, yeah, that one's all right. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, two more, but what's your biggest fear? You can you can go deep on me. You can say something like spiders, but what's your biggest fear? Um, I don't like the dark. Fair. That's one thing. Uh, and then I guess deeper, just like think, just like regrets i think just looking back at you know my life my career and just having like regrets i think you know you gotta try and live life without regrets and just kind of do all the you know the right things um yeah i think just some just want to succeed really bad and i don't really think i don't really want to have any regrets lay it all out there man last one what is one word that best describes you um kind Kind. I like it. So that's always the hardest question in every interview. So last one here, we can take a little bit more time on this one, but I guess in your short career and looking back and growing up and all that, what has been the biggest lesson that you've learned along your journey that you could pass along to the next generation to help them be successful one day? Um, I think kind of two parts. I think one thing is it's probably the biggest cliche, like hard work pays off, but I think throughout my career, that's really, um my career so far sorry um I think that's been the biggest thing for me I think I've always um been a really hard worker and I think I think the biggest thing when looking back like the COVID year where I missed a year and um you know I can't speak for everyone but I know a lot of people you know taking time off and 
not not working their hardest because they know that they might not have a year but I think that's where I made the biggest improvements in my game it was just I was working out all alone in my in my garage um in the cold um and just skating at any ice rink I could find outdoor because all the rinks were closed and I think just just putting the work in I think if you if you want to succeed and you put the work in I think you know chances are that you're going to be successful and then I think with that um Paul Coffey was my old coach um and he used to always kind of tell me um you're not you ain't that good um and so at the time it's kind of like why is he telling me I suck but now kind of looking back it's like yeah like you're not that good you can always be better you can always improve you can always work harder you can however good you think you are or however good you actually are there's always so much more room to improve and I think I really noticed that at this level like you think you're good but you see you know kind of your competition and you know you can you can get a lot better um so yeah I think those are the two biggest things and I know it's so cliche just work hard it, it'll pay off but I think that's so true and I think that's been the biggest thing for me just putting the work in and and just grinding I like it I mean you cannot beat hard work and when you think that you're working out hard or doing whatever you're doing beyond the ice hard there's probably someone that's doing better yeah. doing more and so just always having that go button and yeah. keep going forward but yeah that's awesome Wyatt I appreciate the time today I really look forward to seeing you develop in your career, watching the stars the rest of the season and, and beyond. But uh, good luck, man. Thanks for coming on. Awesome. Thank you very much. Unreal. That was awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoyed the content. There's plenty more Pass the Torch episodes along with other podcasts we got going on and video series we do. So subscribe and we'll see you later.